Oh, it's a shame. A little childhood drama builds character. <laughs> we all have a grab bag of films, videos, and games that, whether through genuine attempts to be scary or completely unintentionally, scared the shit out of us so bad that our whippersnapper brains locked them up in a vault, never to be seen again until adulthood. Now, I'm not much of a bitch, except for the multiple times a day where I'm a bitch, but I do have some strange things going on in this head of mine. <laughs> I guess you could see I'm just a kind of twisted guy. <laughs> yes, even the infallible Jack Tendo has had his metaphorical pants pinned throughout the years. So, I'm going to be talking about my urinated metaphor pants today. Mainly some freaky shit in video games I couldn't stand, but you know, let's throw in some other mediums just for the hell of it. I can't afford a therapist, so sorry everybody, here's the solo. The ocean is fucking terrifying. I hate the ocean and the ocean hates me. I almost died out there once as a kid and that was after learning to hate it, so it hasn't done a whole lot to win me over. Oceans in video games are also the worst. Even if a lot of underwater levels didn't fill me with an underlying sense of dread and unease, they always play like shit, so I'd STILL hate them! Whether it's something specifically designed to tap into my primal fear of the water like Subnautica, which is ironically one of my favourite games, or something as colourful and bombastic as Super Mario, I have and always will have a dislike for video game water submersion. These spider things in Mario Sunshine, the underwater water section in Banjo-Kazooie, the insta-death water in Rayman 2, especially those eels in Mario Galaxy. I still think those things are horrifying. Just fucking look at them! This big fella has been hogging the scary fish in a Mario game spotlight for far too long. Look at these freaks! If there was a way of avoiding the ocean in a game, like if it was open world and just didn't have anything I needed, like in Minecraft, that shit was never getting explored. I'm a city boy, I will build my house into the woods, thank you very much. A specific childhood example of my hatred for the blue goo is my brief but memorable experience with a game called Zack and Wiki Quest for Barbaro's Treasure, released for the Wii in 2007. When I was a kid, a cousin of mine used to come over with a stack of Wii games. We'd play some of them, and then when it was time for him to go, we'd swap some of his games for my games, so I could keep some to play until the next time I saw him, and he could keep mine. One of those games I got for him was Zack and Wiki. I'm pretty sure I gave him Rampage Total Destruction in exchange. I was a horrible cousin to have. From my quick glance at the wiki for Zack and Wiki, it seems to be a very highly regarded 3D adventure game, oozing with style and overall being a damn good time. I wouldn't, and still don't know this for myself, because of one specific section in the game that for some reason scared little me so bad that I took the game out of the Wii, put it back in its box, and never touched it again. The specific moment in question is a sequence where you have to coax the fountain guardian out of his little hidey hole, and already looking at him there were alarms going off in my child brain. Then, by throwing some bait in the water, you cause him to fully reveal himself, and he's a fish. He's, he's just a fish. Granted, it's a big fish, but still. Why on earth this scared me so bad as a kid is utterly baffling to me now, but I guess when you're a kid staring at a CRT, it doesn't take a lot to freak you out. Also, if you go into the water without the bait, it eats you alive. I think that's what scared me. And to this day, I still don't like being out in the ocean in real life, but I have come to accept it in video games. Except for Subnautica, that game can fuck me up. Another thing that for some reason put the fear of God into me was Wario! Specifically, Wario Land The Shake Dimension, which, by the way, is a way better name than Wario Land Shake It. Sorry, America. Americans. Looks like Europe did something better for once. You win on the name Turbo Graphics, though. PC Engine is a shit name. This is another case of cousin trading gone awry. I love the Wario Land games. One, two, three, four. They're all great little platforms that I'd kill to get another installment of. Although I'd kill far more and in far colder blood for another 3D Wario game. And Shade Dimension yeah. is no different. I adore this game's art style. It's so damn pretty to look at. The only thing is, I played this one before I played Wario Land 4, and before I was accustomed to that type of gameplay. So here's seven or maybe eight year old me making my way through the first level, thinking this was going to be just like all the Mario games I love so much. I get up to what I think is the end of the level, all is well, and then... Oh god, what do I do? Why is it so scary now? I'm sorry, Mario! I didn't mean to make you angry, Mario! Please, don't play this game! After that, much like splat and pity, I popped it back in its box, never to be touched again. I promise you, this is like the only other time I've done this. I have in fact played 99% of the games I own for more than six minutes. I'm not sure if it's because of the fact I wasn't expecting it or something else, but this gave me the heebie-jeebies enough to never return to the game. It's funny because Wario is one of my favorite video game characters these days, and I love any game that has his greasy grin slapped on it. But for seven-year-old me, that sleazy smile was an icon of terror. So far, we've established what... So far, we've established what... So far, we've established that what really freaked me out as a kid was when something that seemed light-hearted took a surprising or unexpected turn. Whether it be a cutesy adventure game having a fuck-off huge fish, or a calm tutorial level turning into a panic attack pressed to a disc. So to continue this discussion of left turns, let's talk a little bit about Half-Life 2. 
It's an absolute masterpiece. It's in my top five favorite games ever made, and I've played through it dozens of times over my short, fat life. But the first time I ever played Half-Life 2, it was on the original Xbox on that same shitty CRT, and at an age far younger than anyone should have been playing Half-Life 2. And it was one of the scariest experiences I've ever had with a video game. It was a hand-me-down copy from my brother-in-law, and I'd never even seen Half-Life 1, let alone played it, so I had no idea what its sequel had in store for me. I was too young to grasp all the dystopian themes and the utter hopelessness of the opening, so I didn't really have any bothers there. I was just marvelling at the fact I could pick up the briefcases and throw them around. So I'm enjoying myself, shooting bad guys, fighting with the resistance at my side, and oh, there's some items by this floating dead body. I'll just go ahead and- <laughs> What the f- was that thing? After this, I played the game with nothing but paranoia. I checked around every corner, absolutely bricking it, hoping there wouldn't be any more headcrab zombies. But of course, there were more. And while I managed to power through these to enjoy the combine fights, I had no idea what was coming up next. <laughs> Ravenhome. Playing Ravenhome without any frame of reference or previous experience of any kind in horror or survival games is, to put it lightly, petrifying. The fast headcrabs, man. The fucking fast headcrabs. As someone that despises spiders, maybe even because of Half-Life 2, these guys are the only things in the game that still make me a tad uneasy until they've been effectively detonated with a shotgun blast. That's not to say that the poison headcrabs didn't also give little kid me the, the liquid Hershey squirties. This segment near the end where you have to fend off an endless supply of fast headcrabs was so hair-raising that I never actually got past it as a little kid, and I didn't play Half-Life 2 again until I got my brother-in-law's copy of the Orange Box a few years later and played every game in it to death. Not that I was free of fear there though. The first portal with no knowledge of what it's going to turn into is extremely unsettling as well. As the maps divulge into what's behind the curtain and the complete lack of music, it's just drenched in atmosphere. But when you're a kid, atmosphere isn't such a positive attribute of a game. It just makes you too scared to go downstairs to get a glass of water in the night because the light switch is on the other side of the room, so that meant walking in total darkness for five seconds, and fuck that! Valve games, especially the ones made in Source, just have this specific vibe that I adore now. But when I was a feeble pinball brain simpleton, it was just the thing to get under my skin. Nowadays, I'm much smarter. Now my brain's a ping pong ball instead. Movies! Uh, Parody movies. Uh, Epic movie, superhero movie, scary movie, crack pie movie. movie. You've seen at least one of these while scrolling through Netflix or Amazon or some piracy site, and every last one of them are the film equivalent to a one pound shit shot down at the bar. A move of total and complete desperation. And one specific movie movie, it's Disaster Movie, had a little scene in it with an animatronic depiction of Alvin and the Chipmunks. Because if you didn't know, the only thing in these films that can be even legally classified as comedy is referencing other characters from other movies. So in this film, where all the other characters look like this and this, Alvin and the Chipmunks look like this. They then proceed to show them violently eating someone alive. Now at the ripe age of six, but I guess I just couldn't handle it. I ran out of the room and didn't come back in until I was certain that the movie had been turned off and returned to Blockbuster. We still had a Blockbuster at this point. We, my city was basically Amish. And after that, my brain repressed the shit out of it. I didn't even think this scene was real and I barely remembered the disaster movie was even a thing until this video by I Hate Everything popped up in my YouTube feed and it all came flooding back to me. Fuck you, I hate everything. I didn't like it when you did that. It's especially odd that this set me off so bad, considering the fact that the previously mentioned brother-in-law had been spending quite a while introducing me to all the movies that he was raised with. I watched the likes of Terminator, Alien, Robocop, Robocop 2. <laughs> And I was fine. But this is the thing that chilled me to my bone. I sat my ass down, saw this with my impressionable gooey child eyes and had no negative reaction. But this is where my brain drew the line. I, I, I don't get it. What's it all mean? What's the point? Maybe I'm just stupid. The rest of the stuff I've got for this video is pretty scattered. So we're going to do the child of trauma lightning round. The ABCs of Death, released in 2012, is a collection of 26 short horror films, each one based on a letter of the alphabet. It's a mixed bag of some really cool stuff and shorts that are basically fetishes. The short for the letter J features two samurais in some kind of standoff, and the one dressed in white decides to do this. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
Yeah, the movie got turned off after that. Much like many others, the first time I saw the piano in Super Mario 64, I made this sound. <laughs> Chucky the Killer doll was creepy as hell to me when I was a child, and when my lovely brother-in-law discovered this fact, the next time we were all in Blockbuster video, he found the first DVD with Chucky's face on it and proceeded to chase me around the shop. A similar thing happened with <laughs> The first time I ever saw <laughs> I was super uncomfortable, and he creeped the hell out of me. When my brother-in-law discovered this fact, he drew a big picture of Wee on a whiteboard and left it downstairs overnight for me to discover in the morning. I was not impressed. The first time I pissed off a wolf in Minecraft, I had to shut the fucking game off. When I played Super Mario Brothers for the first time, I walked to the right and there was this strange creature coming towards me. Obviously, I did the right thing and burnt my NES. So, in conclusion, if you were to show me an animatronic of Wario underwater making headcrab zombie noises while Father Grigori shouted to me from the surface, I would be filled with so much pants-shitting, bone-shattering terror that I would immediately perish of a heart attack. Don't act like you wouldn't either! <laughs>